I'm Enno. Uh, I lead the Alpaca team at Lightband. And um, Alpaca brings together integrations to Aka Streams. I live in Stockholm and Sweden with my family, and I enjoy boats a lot, so I have lots of them. Um, and get out in the archipelago and otherwise. Um, who of you has systems in place which uh, depend on file-based integrations? Who believes they will disappear in the next five years? No, no, okay, <laughs> nor do I. Um, so um, much of the idea in this talk is how, how we can move from the file-based integrations to something more streamy on the way. And um, all these file-based integrations come from a time where we had this, oh, we, nothing happens during the night. Systems went offline. And, I think offline is not even a word anymore in our business. I guess offline is more when you log out of Facebook or something. So um, I'll talk about this kind of integration. We uh, have a disk with a file, we read it, and we write it to another file. And I mean, this file file, it's not copying within one directory or something. There might be something in between. But many integrations in the end look like this, which we had before and which we still have, as, we, as, you, as you know. And this is an easy task, isn't it? And there are many technologies involved to get, get this done. We have shared disks, we have FTP servers, we have rsync, we have crontab, we have Windows systems agent or task scheduler or whatever it's called nowadays. And um, that's very brittle, but it still works. So when we want to copy a file in Java, we do something like this, or we used to do it at least. I don't know how many of you have written a copy of file in Java, but we have the file input streams, we wrap them, and we have a file output stream, and we wrap it. And then there's this very interesting part in the middle. And we see the, the heritage from, from C where we need to instruct these classes what to do. How do we transfer data from one to another? And these are streams. I mean, this is streaming, is it? It's, a, it's a, the old, oldest streams we have in Java. We have more, several generations than the, since then. But um, I want to talk more about streaming, of course, and how we get reactive with, from this kind of integration. So when we look at this, we have the input stream, which is some kind of source for bytes. And we have the output stream, which is some kind of sync for bytes. But we still need to explain to them how do we get the bytes from the sync to the source, uh, from the source to the sync. So if we read it like, paint it like this, we have a source of bytes, we have a sync of bytes, and something happens in between. And this taking from there to there, wouldn't it be natural to have it built in in the concept of a source and the concept of a sync? And surprisingly, that's exactly what we have in Aka Streams, um, where we can do just this copying a file by using the Aka standard file IO from path. We get a source of byte strings, which is a kind of wrapped immutable uh, byte array and we can use the two paths to write a file. So if we um, use this kind of abstraction, we can connect the two by using the source to sync. And Aka Streams will pass the data when we call the run method. So we don't have to, explicit, to explicitly say how the data moves from there to there. We just chain, chain them together, and it fixes this. So first, when we call the, this run materializer thingy there, it will happen somewhere. Before that, it's more like a recipe. We, we connect the sink and the source, and that's a blueprint, as we call it. But when we run it, it will run asynchronously. It will this 
code will finish directly and will run asynchronously. But still, when it runs, something might happen. For example, the file is not there, or we can't write to that destination. So whenever we, first when we run it, we, something might go wrong. So, so there's another type in there, this uh, hidden IO result in a completion stage, which shows up first when we run it. So from the stream, we, we, we get some IO result in, in the completion stage. And, and that's one of the tricky parts to understand when, when we try to, to use ACA streams. And uh, even more tricky in this case is that we get the wrong IO result. It's not the one we want. There's an IO result which we get from the source, and there's one from the sync. And we just, when we just use the two method, we'll get the one from the source. But actually, we're more interested in, in if the writing to the file was successful. So um, I'll, um, we can use the run with method, which is quite a little bit different, and, and then we get the right, the, the correct IO result. There are other ways to do this, but this is the, the simplest one. Okay. Um, this materializer and materialization of, of the blueprint is, is one of the parts which, which is most puzzle, puzzling for many people when they start off with like streams. So don't get, be surprised if, if when, when you try it. I don't know how many of you have used ACA streams? Quite a few. <clears throat> so when we have all this together, it's not much code. We copy a file. It might be one of the most expensive ways to copy a file on and with help of a JVM. And of course, we have to run the JVM on Kubernetes and uh, on a virtual machine somewhere in the cloud. But um, yeah, don't go there right now. What I would want, I'd like to look into what's happening between these source and the sync. There's data flowing, there, there are bytes going by. But there's more to it. The uh, stream itself has a signal, signal, signaling uh, infrastructure which connects the sync and the source. So the sync tells the source if it's interested in data right there. And that's what we call back pressure. That's where the, the stream itself becomes reactive as it can adapt. But the sync doesn't know where the data comes from and the source doesn't know where it goes. It's just the, these, these tiny boxes which I indicate there on, on the bigger boxes are, are the standardized protocol which, or the standardized API which ACA Streams uses internally. So to look into back pressure, we have this data flow of streams and different steps, which, and, and, and we, 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 sorry, yeah, we, we get the, the data flowing in there, and this step three is a bit slow, so it can't keep up with the thing. What do we do? You've been around at this conference, so we, we throw Kafka at it. We have to have a Kafka in there. And, and it will um, have unbounded buffering and, and solve the problem. No, maybe not. Buffering data can, can solve the problem, of course, for a while, and we can cure the immediate issue, but, but this thing is, step three is still, still too slow. We ha so we throw more hardware at it at that stage, or oh, we want to paralyze, but yeah. Buffering data won't cure, will, will cure the immediate issue, or well, more hardware might cure it as well but all buffering is limited at some stage. And we might be interested in this first step, that there is a problem in this, and when we can slow down the producing of the data in some cases. So that's where we want back pressure. So when we stream with back pressure, we have a source and the flows in between there and the sink. And we have the, the direction of the stream. All data flows downstream, or for you, it's this direction. It should go there. Um, and what we establish in the ARCA streams, which we don't see, which we basically ne never, never see, is a channel, back channel within the stream. And that's the signal ch channel where we internally send the demand upstream 
So no da data will ever flow as soon as long as the sink doesn't need any data. It's not interested in data, so nothing will come through. So this d demand is signaled upstream, and when the source understands, ah, oh, there's demand, it might just start to send data. We get the the data, and it will flow and tick off the small boxes for the demand, and um, more data may may fl flow in there, but when the demand is not there anymore, no, no data will flow, and by that we get flow control during the stream. This makes the stream use a, a dynamic push-pull model. In some situations, it's push-based, and in some situations, it's pull-based. And the good part is, you don't have to understand when it's which, when it's which the stream will do it for you. But the short, short version is push if downstream is faster and pull when upstream is faster. So a bit more about ACA streams, a bit more words there. We um, have seen this ridiculously simple example. And it won't be get much more interesting, so if it was too boring, just, just leave. But um, we have seen the sources, we have seen sinks. We haven't really seen flow, but the flow is something in the middle of a, of, of a stream. And, and I'll, I'll focus on this point-to-point -point streams so we, that we don't see much, much other elements in our stream. The interesting part is that we, we have a type connected to all these elements, so the, the source has uh, emits elements of type T, and the sink can swallow elements of type S, and this flow has incoming elements of type A and emits elements of type B. So the compiler will always help us that we connect things that are compatible. We can't go wrong there, or it's more the other way around. The compiler will yell at us until we get it right. Another part of ACA streams are the stream operators. And in, in the, this presentation, I, I'll just use these three operators. And map is just map as we know it from the Java 8 streams from the, from the collection API, where we can transfer an element. Then we have this via operator, where we basically take a, an existing flow and paste it into our, our stream. So that, that's an, uh, we can declare the flow at some other place and reuse it in, in several streams or have it there. <clears throat> and then we have the more advanced map async, which allows us to uh, run a couple of mapping instructions asynchronously. And here as well, we have the type A and B. And, and uh, when we use a map async, we have to tell it how many things it might start in parallel. So this might be a four then. So, so it, in there we have a um, completion stage which will, will tell the stream when, when the processing of an element is finished. And ACA streams will keep track of these elements and make sure that the emitted value comes in order even though they are calculated asynchronously within this map async. We, we'll uh, see, see how, how we use that bit later. So I guess the, the pause. We have the overnight batching. So we have, we have copied the file in a very expensive way. But we, what we want to do is copy the file when we de detect it. So not, not on a cron schedule, not, not by a window scheduler. We, we want, to, as soon as there's a file, we, we want to copy it. And that's where the uh, tiny alpaca comes into the picture. We have, in the alpaca uh, project, we have a file module, which uh, allows us to do just this. We can, we can detect directory changes. It's not just new files. We can detect uh, re removed files and, and stuff like that. So that's this directory change source, which we create like this in Java or, or Scala. Can, it might look the same, and we get a source 
of something. We point it to a certain directory, we give it an interval, how often do we want to pull this directory? Underneath, it's using a Java Nio to, to do the stuff. And there's some limit how, how many changes it, it might accept before it explodes, if nobody's interested. So from, from this source, we have a type of course on it, um, which is a pair of a path and a directory change enum, which can tell us what happened in the directory on that path. So we'll use this outcome of this source to give us the, uh, the information that there's a new file by filtering those messages. So we just want the, the, the uh, directory change creation messages out of there. And whenever we, um, so that, that's the second part of the, the uh, pair. And when we find these messages, we just select out the first bit and that's just the path. So this together gives us a new source. We can declare this source as a new file detector. And this source looks like any other source we might have from other sources or uh, from other people's source code or from our own source code. So, so this is an important concept. We build our own source which just looks like these boxes we had in the beginning, but it is a bit more intelligent than the standard one or more adapted to the use case we have and then the standard one we have in Alpaca. And we see, want to connect this now to, to our copying a file. So we use the detect new file source and whenever we detect the file, we'll have a, a box there where, where we run the, the uh, copy file logic we had before. And when we're done, we'll ignore the result for now. So what we see here is this flow which detects sources, and then we have another flow, which is an inner flow with, in this bigger box. And all this together, in, if we want to look at the in source code, is this. We have had our source, our file detector, we use the map async, which I told, talked about earlier, and use this other flow which we had to create to copy the file, and um, we ignore the result. And the eight here says we we can start on, on co copying up to eight files in parallel, depending on how, how fast we have that. So I talked about some some inner flow there. We have had the, this picture. We have one flow which is from the file to detect, detect new file source and sends messages, which will eventually end up in this uh, throwaway sync. But there's another flow, which will be the bytes from disk to disk. So the outer flow triggers the creation of an inner flow, which will then transfer the bytes. Okay, all this comes from reactive streams, but I think you have heard about reactive streams these days a bit, this conference, I hope. Um, so, it's a standard. It has been created a couple of years back and is nowadays a part of JDK 9 as well with, with a few interfaces. And these interfaces are not something you should know. It's just important for, the, for library implementers to connect different reactive streams compli compliant libraries within one JVM. And Alpaca is extending this concept of reactive streams to reactive integrations. What we want to do, or what we do, <laughs> is to connect the technologies which gives us cross-system back pressure. Depending on the technology, we can, can get there. And so, certain technologies which we support, we, the, the technology itself does, does not really allow for it. But we can make this signal on demand 
happen from one system, from one source of information through one system to another system, which might be the sink in that case. So to carry on, I'd like to come to look into how can we get from this file-based integration to something more interesting, to something more streaming-like. Um, so what can we put in between here to have it more like a stream? We might have huge files. Some people have huge files, like millions of something. I think we have seen uh, T-Mobile talking about uh, very huge files which they import. And so, so what we need to do is get from the bytes we have in the file to something more interesting. We need to pause it. We need to build messages of it. So we, we need something in between which we can, can convert these bytes to something meaningful in the context. And Alpaca comes with a few processes for, for this kind of information. So we, we can pass today CS, CSV, JSON, or XML. And the important bit there is that it's not you know, we swallow the whole XML and do something with it. It's, it's streaming parsing. It's, so it's, it's sax parser in, in there. And the same for, the, for CSV. We don't have to read the, the whole file. It's, it's streaming aware. And we have a streaming JSON uh, selector as well. So we can, in, in, a, in a bigger JSON document, we can select certain elements which we are interested in to, to pass on. And all these elements within Alpaca are, are modules for themselves. So you just pick the ones you need. It's not, it's not a huge library which you bring in there. So I'll, I'll focus on uh, one I contributed, actually, uh, the CSV one, where we um, get byte strings and pass these uh, CSV lines. So we get out a collection of byte strings. And uh, so wh whatever source we have that emits byte strings, we can connect it to uh, this CSV parsing line scanner with a via operator in, in Aka streams. And after that, the stream will contain collections of byte strings and one collection for each line. So what you very often want to do with, but, uh, with CSV is to convert it to maps because there's some magical header line in the beginning of the file. So, so there, there's a, another support tool in the Alpaca CSV module, which takes collections of byte strings and uses the, head, the first line in the stream or file, in our case, to, to understand what we, the keys should be. So we have a, a, another via step here. And um, yeah, the via is more like a, a, for us a mental model of different steps. Actually, underneath, Aka will, will make sure it, it's not doing this, doing that, it, it will fuse these different steps within the stream to make it quite efficient. So with these two steps, which we might, in our project, we, we might use them a lot. So we um, can create a flow by connecting these two flows into new thing. So we can build our own CSV bytes to, to map flow with this syntax. And then we have this uh, element to create new blueprints for, for streams, which does this in one step. So when we want to use this, which is the same co code as before, we might want to con convert it to, to JSON with, with Jackson in this case. And there's a, yeah, in this case, we, we just populate a method, uh, an, a JSON object with all the key value pairs on the map. And all of a sudden, we have um, JSON objects flowing in our stream. So here we have an application of the, of the map operator.
So now we, we, we get this, we read a file, we can pass the CSV, we get a JSON map, and then we can do something with this JSON. And there I want you to think about an important question. What is a stream? Do we need to have 50,000 methods a second to have a stream? Or would, would maybe 10, 10 a second do for a stream? Or maybe one a month? Is it still a stream? Yes, I think so. Whenever we have something that happens on a kind of regular basis, we have a stream. So this overnight integration is, is a stream once a day, maybe, to start with. But now that we have the uh, file detection and conversion into messages, and we have, might have some destination, some, some system which takes these snippets of data we send to it, we might be able to, to have the source system produce this file more often, every hour or something. And all of a sudden, this stream is ticking much faster than, than we, we had it before when we just copied the file. And this destination bit, I, I, I um, won't go any deeper there. I, it, but there are many destinations that we support in Alpaca, uh, which is a project under the Alpaca umbrella. And Alpaca is just that what I'm talking about here. We have reactive in enterprise integrations library, and it supports APIs for Scala and Java, um, and connects, basically, other technologies to ACA streams. So if you want to have the short version, it's endpoints for ACA streams. But we have these other things, conversion, parsing, as well. So whenever we talk about enterprise integration in the JVM world, we think of Apache Camel, which has been around for quite a while. And um, people ask me, oh, but is Alpaca the same as Camel? No, no, it's not. It has different approaches and very important bits. So who, who uses Camel? Hans? Not too many. Oh, that's surprising. But OK, in Camel, each message which goes in, in, through the route, which they call it, is one big thing which you do on, can only inspect the type or the, the content by, 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 by inspecting it. it. It doesn't carry any type on that. So you can connect things that don't fit together very easily. Where we, as in Alpaca and Alpaca streams, we, we are very strict on the types. So the compiler will stop us from doing bad things. Um, the back pressure is definitely the, the most important feature which we, we get with this kind of streaming technologies. It might not be the, the most relevant in the file scenarios, but as soon as you split the file into small messages, which come quite, might come quite rapidly, more rapidly, it might become important to, to slow down the parsing depending on the, the system that receives the data where Camel doesn't support any back pressure whatsoever. There's a Rector Streams comp component in, for Camel, which lets you connect steps within the Camel route with Reactive Streams compliant systems, but it doesn't make the, the, the Camel route com uh, reactive. Camel has OSGI support, which if you care about that, um, we, we, we don't uh, do that in, in Alpaca. And um, Camel gives you much more about how enterprise patterns, they are always referring to the enterprise patterns, enterprise integration patterns book. And a lot of within Camel stems from, from that book. And you, you see the pattern much more there. In Alpaca, we, we, we don't focus on, on that. It, we are more like the way into the Aka streams and, and the streaming world. And as Camel has been around for a while, they have a lot of documentation and a lot of old documentation which is not valid anymore, stuff like that. 
becomes a problem when you're in a, a 10 year old open source project, of course. <coughs> so when we look into Alpaca, we have uh, different connectors for cloud services, where AWS is integrated the most, as you might assume. Um, we, 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 um, all this is contributed by a community. So we, we are mostly shepherding the, the, uh, the community's efforts to, to get these integrations to work. So we have a quite vibrant community providing these things, even for, for these cloud technologies. Yeah, and for Google Pub Sub, which is quite popular as well, and for sure it's not as big. But Microsoft has started to, to do Arca Streams integrations on their side. I haven't, I haven't looked at it any closer. And we have support for, for a lot of data stores, which are integrated with Alpaca Streams via Alpaca. And same here, it's the community who's done the job and what we try to, to ensure quality and, and, and to, to help them make it testable, understand what they're doing with Alpaca Streams. And the good thing is by sharing these connectors, in the community and different people using them, we harden them as well. Everybody could write them themselves, of course, could invest there, but by, by, by sharing that effort, it becomes much better for everyone. And I guess that's what open source is about. And um, then we have another category of connectors there for messaging with AMQP or with Redbit MQ. JMS MQTT, and uh, the most used connector we offer today is the uh, Apache Kafka connector. But as soon as you don't use that, you don't really have any back pressure anymore because you're just buffering. But anyway, um, outside of Alpaca, there, there are a few connectors in the community. You, you might connect to the uh, routings in, in Apache Camel with other connectors. There, there's another couch-based connector, Eventuate. Um, and there might be many more. I'm, I'm not scanning the internet every day for, for this kind of connectors. But, so if, if you know more than this, you know, please tell me, we, we, because we want to, to have them on the site as well so people can discover them when coming to Alpaca. And, um, this is what the, the site looks like today. We list all the integrations we have and uh, try to be somewhat comprehensive in the documentation. The risk is always when, when you get this easy to use integration tool that you don't understand the technology which it hides, which is a good thing in, in many situations, but uh, the Alpaca documentation can't teach you all the technologies integrated with, of course. So most people that, that start using Alpaca have a knowledge of the technologies they want to integrate with beforehand. I guess that's the, the normal path. And then you, you're interested in Alpaca streams and want to get it there. What we are working on right now is to be able to call it 1.0. So we're trying to structure all the, the modules within Alpaca the same. So you, we found, find our way and, and that you have the same user experience independently of the module you use. And most, most modules have some kind of settings and they offer things, sources, flows, depending on the technology. But th that experience is important to us to have it the same. And we, we think of about them how can we make it binary com compatible in the future? So when we improve Alpaca, we want you to be able to switch to newer versions without too much of a hassle of changing APIs. Because until now and, and, and still, the APIs are developing quite fast and we, we want to, to manage it in a way so that it doesn't hurt you on the way. And of course, testing these, all these integrations is, is quite, quite a project itself. We have 
a huge build with, with uh, many Docker containers spinning up and, and running against and stuff like that. Um, but there's uh, help highly appreciated if you know an interesting technology which is relevant to be integrated with Docker streams. Come to the Alpaca community. We have two repositories at GitHub and we have a discussion forum at, at the Lightband discussion forum. In the Aka forum, there's a, a category for Alpaca and Aka streams. Yes, and that's what I had for you. Do we have any questions? Okay, thanks for the talk. Um, I just had a question. You initially put up, uh, you know, this kind of comparison between Aka and Camel, uh, Alpaca and Camel, sorry. Uh, and then you mentioned that there's a, a Camel connector for Alpaca. Yes. I'm just wondering, so if somebody's, for example, already using Camel, um, how, do, how would the two work, and uh, should you look to migrate to Alpaca? And, you know, just kind of, if you could talk a bit about that. Yes, so, so what, you, what you have in Camel is, is this exchange object, which is flowing through. And, and what you can do when you integrate Aka streams and, and Camel is to get this exchange object up as a message in, into the stream. And that might be helpful in some situations, but in many situations, it might be too big, and yeah. So, so there, there, there is a uh, Akka camera module as well, which is deprecated, which does basically that. But now there's the, this community-driven connector as well, which might be more alive than, than the Akka camera module. But there's no, no, no way, like, I have camera now. What, I have to do these steps to get to Alpaca. Uh, there's no no such road that that makes it easy to to migrate. It's too different in nature. Can you uh, just touch a little bit on how um, the um, for people who might be familiar with the the failure handling in general in Aka, how the failure handling in Aka streams is maybe different or makes things easier? Yes. Um, in, in, in Aka streams, when, when, when there's a, a failure in, in any step in the, in the stream, it will fail the whole stream. So you, you can inspect this, the, the, the failure in, in the result of, of the, the whole stream handling. And then you can apply, just as you have in, in regular Aka, supervision strategies to the stream, which will start the stream again when something fails or, or, or the like. Or you, you can even ignore messages when there's an error. Thank you.